morning and welcome to the Shack Shack. Save happy and creative, stay home and craft. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and I'm here to keep you company and uh, drive the bus for another doodle hour. So come on in if you're there. Hopefully Paul will be in the building. Paul, is the sound okay? Do let me know. My chair's not. <laughs> That's better. Okay. I think I'm so heavy, it just keeps sinking. <laughs> anyway, come on in. Um, we're still on the um, on the lettering, aren't we? So on Monday, good morning, Jill. Nice to have your company. Come on in. It's lovely and mild today. The weather is beautiful. Well, not beautiful, but it's not cold. Come on in, ladies and gents, of course. Hello, all. Come on in. Paul, sound is nice and clear. Not too loud, I hope. It's very loud outside. We've got the tree surgeons in because this is their last opportunity to prune some of the trees, which are very, very leggy and tall. So they're just having a little haircut at the moment. And I've asked them politely to keep the noise down because they tend to yell. <laughs> it was quite comical. I thought, I can't handle this for eight hours because the one on the ground is yelling at the one in the tree and the one in the tree is yelling at the one on the ground. And I thought, mm-mm. So I said, Mark, because that's the one on the ground. I said, perhaps, I said, it's not a problem, but if you could just um, turn it down a little bit <laughs> and, and not use the chipper between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, that would be grand. And he said, no problem at all, Bob. The only problem is him up there, he's deaf. <laughs> I feel great. He said, yeah, he's partially deaf. I said, okay, okay. Well, there we are then. <laughs> That's handy. <laughs> no wonder he was shouting at the top of his lungs, but apparently he's really good at what he does. So there we are. He's up the tree and he can't hear the bloke on the ground. So we shall see. <laughs> Oh, it's a funny old world. You couldn't write it, could you? I remember meeting, while well, you're coming in, coming in, I remember meeting a um, a baker. He was German. and um, But he wasn't working. And, um, and I said, well, you know, he said, yeah, I'm unemployed. I'm an unemployed baker. I said, oh, that's unfortunate. He said, yeah, I've got an allergy to flour. <laughs> career choice <laughs> choice career choice come on in i've yet to develop an allergy to ink and pencils so do let's join let's join um let's join hands let's join in and do some doodling and leave all that out there and and just relax have you got your cup of tea are you ready to to do some shading I thought we'd have another look. Good morning, everybody. Oh, look from everywhere. Queen's Ferry. Isn't that up north? Liv is that Liverpool? Düsseldorf. Grüß dich, Gisela. So let's have a look. I'm going to have to put my other glasses on. We're on the lettering, aren't we? And on Monday, we started, we started delving into the uh, brush pen. And we'll do more of that. We'll do more of that. So if you haven't got a brush pen, treat yourself. But like I said on Monday, it really isn't it isn't mandatory or compulsory. You can just use a biro, you know. Let's have a look what we're doing, shall we? Everybody here. So you may recall that we were we were looking at the artist is nothing without the gift. And then we did the lettering and we did half of it with with the um, micron pens, didn't we? With these, with with the oh, I need the other glasses. With the um, the thinner one, the O one, right? And but then we we tried to emulate just to get used to using a brush pen because they are definitely a different animal. How did you get on? I think the more I use it, the better I'll get at it, which is what we always say, isn't it? So I think today. Why don't we do a little bit of shading? I know we're moving towards the gilding. We are. We're going to go to the gold leafing. But the last thing that you would do would be the gold leafing on any project, wouldn't it? 
that would be the, for for me that would be the very very last finishing touch that's the finessing as far as i understand it i've mentioned her before and and you should look her up her name's Rose, rosina wachtmeister must be a german lady she was very very popular in the 70s and 80s and her signature was always gold leaf somewhere in her painting sometimes larger areas of gold leaf but her name was rosina wachtmeister and she also she must have picked up a commission or a contract with uh, rosenthal you know the and so she made these beautiful cats do you remember the cats they had like quite a geometric shape to them and their faces were like a, like a saucer and then it went up into their ears and they were very geometric almost mondrian kind of black gold angular very beautiful that was rosina wachtmeister's design anyway yeah so what i'm suggesting is we'll do some shading today and then we're building aren't we we're building our pictures we're building our letters our lettering and we're also building our confidence which i think is the key to the whole process so as far as the gilding goes um our Paul will give you the link if you haven't got the gear. We put together a little gold leafing, um, a little gold leafing set. So you get the gold leaf. I've put mine in a in a Tupperware box. You get a excellent sable hair. I know it seems like rather an extravagant paintbrush, but you just wash it. I use it all the time for gold leaf and to get into the the, the dots, for example, which is where I want to go in the end um, with the metal leaf glue it's good it's a good one um so yeah so that's something that we will we'll get to trust me we will um and i was looking um also at where we left off i've already put my lines in i've sectioned off you see and i thought today we'd take a look at the shading because it all makes such a difference you know the shading the coloring and what we what we had done if we go back to a raw one we'd got that hadn't we and then what we did was we took our pens either our micron pens or our brush pens and we added that second line which in turn that made it look more interesting but it also gave us um places to color in do you see so if you if you look up close you can see we were we were given opportunities then we gave ourselves coloring opportunities we've got a line of stamps actually um, which are the same kind of thing do you know these ones this too shall pass clean out a corner of your mind and creativity will instantly fill it that would be lovely you light up my life every day that's lovely try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud but you can see jim did these and and it's exactly the same principle. See how he's given you open lettering so that you can add a flash of color if you choose to. Just makes it more interesting. So that's what we learned how to do on Monday. And today I thought we'd have a look at shading because it's, it's uh, I suppose if I think about my artwork, the shading is the most important part whether I'm adding a drop shadow, you know, I love doing that. I love making something that's as flat as a tack look dimensional. I really enjoy doing that. It's my cup of tea. And, um, and so there, we've done this before. I mean, we've been together for two years now, friends. So uh, there's no way I could have traveled through on this bus trip with you for two years and not talked about shading, but sometimes it's really good to revisit. And I find that um, it's all about, it's about, the color, the pressure, yeah, very much about the pressure and the build up. It's all about the layers. So, so I thought we'd have another we'd have another look at that today because it really will build up our artwork, and also letters are perfect for practicing your shading on as well. How do you feel about that? I have a smaller screen than usual. Can anyone help me? Ah. Uh, Not sure what you mean, darling. Um, I tell you what I can do. 
if you've got a smaller screen than usual, I can come in a bit more. Does that help? Hmm? I should think so. So now here's the thing. The first thing you can see, I've put my lines in. Let me get my glasses. I did it ahead of time, but I've got one that's empty. Do you remember we, we, we've got a download of this? Paul will give you the, the print, uh, the digi print. You go to the website and there'll be a digi download of this. So it's great for practicing. And you haven't got to keep using your original. Do you remember I said, put your original in a poly bag. That's your original piece. But if you haven't got an, an original piece and you want to join in and practice, then just download my artwork. There. So what I wanted to show you was, um, I'll show you some ideas. Okay. So we've got a pencil, H, B, H, whatever. And you'll see... On the original one, we had the lines, didn't we? Actually, well, on the original one, which is on the tracing paper, we had the serious lines, yeah? So if you wanted to, let me show you some tricks. There's always more than one way to do something. If this is your art here, right, if you've transferred the lines, then, of course, you should be able to take that. I wonder if I've done it yet. Let me just see on here if I've actually transferred. Yeah, I have. Okay, so if I wanted to now, I could overlay my, just to give myself the, the, the orientation, I could overlay my artwork and then I can go back in. Let's just I'll tell you what's a very good idea when you're doing this is to put it in place. There are always more than, there's always more than one way to do anything, I think. Let's have a look. It's just about sequence, isn't it? So you look at two registers, look at upper T, look at the and Zola, and then the rest should follow quite well, okay? And you hold, put it in place, hold it in place like that, with two bits of one or two. Now, because there's a, you know there's a lot of graphite on there. So I'm just going to put something over there. And now there's, it's about the sweep. It's about sweeping through. It's about sweeping through like this. Rather than pulling, it's just push away. So if you're right-handed, you probably want to be going in that direction, right? And then you're just going to sweep through. Let's see if this works. I've got lots of different possibilities here, but I just want to show you some tricks. So now I can run that through there like so. I'll see if I've got a faint line. Yeah, see? And now I've got I've got a faint line exactly where there you go. So now I can thicken it. So that's one way of going through the lines. Okay. If you want to use your original artwork, that's definitely the way to go. Yeah. Or if you're feeling brave, I need to put my original back in its in its tracing paper packet you could also you could just eyeball it so you're going to go from there to there like that and you can go really lightly and just sketch it through okay you do that can't you go freehand now a lot of you will say not going to happen right now here's another thing and this involves a purchase but not from me not from me we tried to get these for you. I ordered, well, <laughs> it's the world we live in at the moment. I ordered a hundred of them and I got two. <laughs> and when we rang up to find out where the other 98 were, um, we were told that they discontinued them. I said, well, that's useful. <laughs> so we got two. <laughs> and these are these, what we call flexible curves. You may have these. Right. But if you if you like this kind of artwork, you might want to just go on Amazon and treat yourself to one of these. I've had my one, my Faber Castell one for 30, 40 years, and it's still as good as new. But this is worth looking at. If, if you if you fancy if you fancy doing this kind of work, look, see, because you can lay it down and you can make a curve any way you want. You just bend the it's a bendy ruler. Look really worth worth investing in but it's not from me 
it's just um i'm sure they're all over they're all over look see so you bend it where you want it excuse my head it's because i've come in so tight so you i'm just standing up so i can see it better so you bend it where you want it and then you just flick through see then you bend it back the other way so for lettering or for anything I wish I could sell them to you. I do. Of course I do. But I can't. And then I thought, well, do you know what? It's just as easy for me to say to you, go on Amazon and see if you can find a bendy ruler. If you can get the Faber-Castell one, happy days. I always would support this company if I can. Um, these are flexible curves as well. Can't vouch for the quality, although, well, I mean, I just know that this one has lasted me my life there you go don't have to buy them every year that's for sure yeah i've had this since i was in my 20s see so if i want to bring it around that way i just bend it round, and it, it just stays in place they're very very good you know and then i can come around that way see so easy very nice to do. And I think for us doodlers, this is actually a really cool thing, isn't it? Hey, I don't know why I'm holding it. I don't have to. It, it does its own thing. Just bend it where you want it, like that, and then just flick it through. See? But either way, whether you use a ruler, whether you go freehand, whether you use your tracing paper, like I say, there are always more than one way to do something, aren't there? That's true. Uh, this is just the reason I say this is not because I want you to spend money. It's because if you struggle with the other two ways, then maybe you, you, you know, you don't know that these exist. These are cool. Very cool indeed. All right. So there you go. And you can get, you can get like plastic things like protractors and you get loads of different shapes. For me, this is, it's all in one. Right, so now we've we've accomplished that. Let's have a let's have a sip of tea and let's see how we're doing. How is everybody? Are you okay? Yeah. Yesterday was a, a just a rubbish day. Do you ever have those days where you just it starts it's you, it starts wrong and it just continues to go wrong? And um, well, it wasn't a rubbish day. It was a rubbish morning. And then at about lunchtime, it was really going downhill pretty fast. And my stress levels were through the roof for whatever reason. And, um, and then um, I thought, let's start the day again. Just because the morning's been rubbish. I nearly said something else. Um, there's no reason why I can't start the day again. And so I did. I did. That's all you've got to do. Just... That was then, this is now, and here we go again. And once you get into the habit of doing that, you know when something goes wrong and then and then you get into that wrong frame of mind, you know, all you've got to do is stop, redirect your thinking, reframe, put it in perspective, you know. That's what I had to do. I had to right-size the, the incident, if you like. It wasn't that bad at all. It wasn't. It could have been a hell of a lot worse, but it wasn't. And so I just needed to... Stop, smile, and go again. And then actually the afternoon was fine. And I did some really ni nice artwork for the Sunday TV show, you see. And I think that's, that's it. You just have to give yourself permission to, you know, you're not sentenced to a rubbish day just because it started out incorrectly. You just say, whoa, hang on a minute. Turn around, smile, and go again. You can salvage, you know, because life is short, isn't it? It is. It's very, very short. The clock is ticking. I'm going to start singing Enjoy Yourself in a minute. <laughs> you know, you don't want to waste it. Don't want to waste it. A lot of patchworkers and sewers have the curve ruler. They just need to find it. There you go. Excellent. They are a good thing, aren't they? They are a good thing. I don't even think they're that expensive. I don't know. The Faber-Castell one probably be pricier. Um, right. Come on. Keep smiling. I find when I smile, it's more difficult to be miserable. Even if I don't feel like smiling. If you smile, it's quite hard when you're smiling. 
it, the whole world smiles with you. When you're smiling, I'm doing it now, it's difficult to be unhappy. I think smiling releases some kind of endorphins or something. Try it. it just smile, you know, isn't it? Don't you feel better? Go on, crack a smile. You can do it. There you go. <laughs> right, come on, let's do some shading. Okay, now, do you remember Faber Castell? You'd think I had shares in their company. I sure do wish I did. Um, I don't. I just love them and I love their product. Do you remember we um, we were talking about that set of 12 pencils? Uh, because a lot of you have got the poly, uh, the pergolines, but not the polychromos. And so we introduced a set of 12 pencils, which would kind of supplement the pergoliners so that you could do shading and so on. Not forgetting that if you haven't got any of these things, you can use a HB pencil. You can use an HB pencil. I find really, really, I find it more difficult to control an HB pencil than I do the polychromos or the pergoliners. I think they're quite, the graphite pencils are quite, you have to be pretty good to get the, the, the different levels of shade. It can go from nothing to dark quite quickly with these, can't it? Maybe we should have a lesson in how to use a prop, just a basic pencil. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the pencils because I was thinking on this, what I'd like to do is keep it subtle and not too bright. I want to just, you know, I just want to keep it soft. That's the word. So I'm not using bright colors. I'm using muted colors. And then I thought muted colors where well, they're all in a box. They're all in one, one set of 12. Um, and if you, if you look here, so we've got the metallics, which are great because gold, silver, and copper, they actually work really well. Then you've got the greys. So you've got the warm grey two, and you can see, let's just have a look. I've got warm grey two, cold grey three. That's Payne's grey. That's a brilliant one. Then I've got a, why am I doing this upside down, Barbara? Warm four. That's that one, a little bit darker. Warm five, a bit darker again, Payne's grey. So you can see you've got a really nice graduation there, okay? And then I, th I thought ivory is a good one rather than white, ivory. And then this one is a cr cream. It, it looks like yellow, but it's actually a really nice creamy color. And this one, it's called beige red, but it's just a very, very nice pink, you know? That's quite nice. Uh, fleshy color. And then, um, then this one is the blue, which is a sky blue, which is a subtle color that I used here. And then I, of course, I had to go and get a different one. I went and got a nice green, just because I, I like green. Green is a is a good color. And then I, and then I wanted to tone down the yellows because I didn't I wasn't so fussed about the yellow. So I just added a little bit of green to the yellow. I mean they are the the quintessential blending pencil, aren't they? So you just toned it down a little bit grey, didn't you? Right. So what I wanted to do is you need the lines. Have you got your dividers in? And then I was going to suggest that we do a little practice on shading. Yeah. So if we go to the one that I haven't done anything on yet, there we go. Just place plain white practice. And where we're going to put the shade, let me come in really tight here, because really all we need to be looking at is the artist. Let's look at this bit here. Do you fancy having a go at this? I know that you you always like when we do sort of drop shadow stuff. What we're looking at here, this is just a practice piece, right? We want to put shadow in underneath anything that's horizontal. Let's do that first. So you're just gonna, you're gonna put your, your pressure and then you sort of 
Look, I'll do it really hard with a black pencil so you see what I'm doing. I'm going like that and then I'm coming away like that. So you go like that and then you come away like that. So you come in and then you shade out. See, because it's black, it's really s s extreme. So the other thing to do is put a line in like that and then feather it out, feathering. Right? So you go in and then you feather. You've got different ways. You can, you can keep going over the same line and then come out. See, that works too. So you go in and then you start coming and you keep going over the same place and it will get darker. So you don't even have to press harder. Just go go in and then just keep going over the same line. It'll get darker and darker and darker. So if you go in lighter and then you just keep going over the same place, it will get darker automatically. And then as you start traveling up, the less strokes you give it, the lighter it will get. See, that's the theory. So we're not going to start, though, with the darkest color. We're going to start with the lightest color. And we'll, we'll go with the lightest colour, right? And we'll just, let's just add colour to anything that's horizontal. Let's, uh, let's add some colour, a little bit of this shade, to anything that's horizontal. And what we're doing is we're coming down a little bit. So you go in and then you just travel down. Go in and then travel down. In and then travel down. There you go, like that. So these are, these are very forgiving colours because they're so... This is boring beige, I always call this one. Warm grey too, my favourite, right? So that's all, that's all you're doing then. And then we'll go with the vertical ones. So all the vertical ones, so you go down to there and then do the same thing again. So you go cut in, right, in and then come out. Don't press too hard though, you'll add the depth. Right, in you go and then out. Anything vertical now. So you're going in and then like that. And then, and then you just drift away, drift away. This is this is vertical. In and then drift away. In and then drift away. See? There you go. So you go tight and then. It's a building game. This takes time. I did, uh, I spent about an hour yesterday shading. Um. Shading a piece of artwork for the TV on Sunday. I'm on telly on Sunday, two to four. And and what makes it look good is the shading. Until I added the shadow, it was pretty mediocre what I was doing. Right. So so that's it. You've got so you so you're putting your shade there. It's like the source of light is coming from that angle, this angle. So the shade is here and here. See? But you don't want any lines like I've just done. So you've always got a get out card. Uh, where did I put that rubber? Here we are. The um, Faber-Castell pink rubber is built to take out. If you, if you put too much in, you can just lift it off again. Okay. Right. So once you've done all your light colors like that, and also on the S's, just get on the curve and then just feather it out. Right. And in there. So you're just getting a little bit of shade on that side. Right. And once you've done that, then you're going to move to the next darker colour. Yeah. Don't have to do them all. Three will do. But it's just a question of which one you want to go to. So, for example, now I've only used I've only used the warm beige. I'm going to go to my my um, the one where we can catch. I'm catching up now, right? So I've done my my warm beige. I'll keep my practice sheet here though, as well. Okay, so now let's just stick with the artist. See, normally what I would do is I do the whole thing, but I want to do at least one air, one, maybe the two top bits, and then you can do the rest, can't you? Okay, so now I've done the warm grey one. Now I want to go to another colour. I want to go to another colour. I'm always going to practice it on a bit of scrap first. So next thing is, how sharp does the pencil want to be when you do this? So check it. And don't, use, don't put your best bit underneath when you do it, right? 
So you're going to check it now because what you're doing now is you're cutting in along the edge. See, you're going to cut in along the edge. So you're staying. Again, you can just do, if you press too hard, they'll crumble. So don't press so hard, Barbara. All right, here we go. So what you're doing is you're, you're just staying along the edge now. You're not feathering out quite so far. Okay. See, so that's the, that's the point. If you were doing it from this side, right, you're in there, but then you don't go out as far. So you, you like that. And then you, so here, for example, but instead of traveling as far as you did with the other color, you only go half as far. So you go in there and then you travel out a bit. Do all the, so you're in there and then you travel out a bit. There and then out a bit. And you'll see it's starting to look, see, so see how it's starting to work. It, it, it takes a little while, but suddenly it starts to ping. See? And take your time. This is it. it. When I'm on the telly doing this, I'm always scrambling because I think it's, I don't know whether it's boring to watch, but I'm running against the clock. You know we do, you know. That's, it's the nature of the beast. It's silly telly. And, and, of course, you can't spend an hour. I think the craft store is amazing anyway for the amount of time they give us to demonstrate. It's, uh, you know, I've been on other channels where you, yeah, <laughs> you don't get any time at all. So, um, so, so I don't spend a lot of time showing you how how to actually build this shade up. See, I can go back in again with the 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 boring beige, and I can I can blend the two now. So in here we go again, and I can use my finger to cut in over. See, my finger stops me going over the edge. Here we go. So you just start blending that one out. So you build up your color. So this is only the scrap one, but you can see how it's, is that working now? Paul, let me know, because it looks right from where I am, but sometimes it doesn't work on the screen as well, you know. Let's go to this one now, and let's, let's add the darker grey. So the next thing is Faber-Castell pencils, they're expensive, you get what you pay for, so when you sharpen them, you've got choices. Obviously, they meant you to sharpen their pencils, otherwise they wouldn't have introduced. This is the one that I really like. Let's have a look. So we've got a colour one here. If I go in, let me just show you. I'm going to show you. So this becomes quite sharp, okay, quite sharp. If I do that once, but I don't want it, a total point, right? I want, so what I'm doing is I'm using a piece of sandpaper. These sanding blocks are good for this. See all the sandpaper here, look. So when this is chock a block, it's very basic, but it really works well. So what I'm looking for is a sort of a chisel on that side. So it's flatter, see? And this is such an, an efficient way of doing it without wasting a lot of the expensive pencil. So now, for example, which one am I using here? The next one, cold grey three. And let's, let's just play it safe. We'll start up this end again. And I'm going to lean on, lean on me. Right, I'll lean on that. And I'm going to go, let me see, make the artwork do your do it for you let's see maybe no i think i'm better off coming around that way and pointing into the line that's it so you dig in a little bit and then you come along that edge and then you feather it out in you come and then feather it out in you go let's do three and that should really work so around we go again. You know you're pressing too hard when it keeps crumbling, okay? Right, there you go. So you've got the chisel, 
and the chisel is what gives you that smoother shadow. Then it also depends what what kind of paper you're using. I mean, um, copy paper. Oh, I'm off the page. Sorry. Copy paper is really good for practicing on, actually. And the other thing about this, the other thing about this is it's so therapeutic. Cole, I've just had a, I've just had a thought, right? Because we've got some superb, honestly, wait till you see them. Um, a colouring art cards ready to to present to you. And I was just thinking, this is going to be so, oh, so useful. This, what we're doing here, when we, when you, when I show you the art cards, I don't think, I don't think we've even got them on the website yet because we said we'd hold fire, you know, with the sale and everything and with all the movement and the fluctuation on the television. We said we'd just hold fire, but I just thought, oh, this is a skill set that you want to, you really want to um, develop. Am I working on a lumpy mat? Do you know what I'm going to do? Work off the mat. I'm going to work off the mat because the mat's got something on it. It's like the princess and the pea. Paul, you know that beautiful, those art cards? That we haven't, we haven't sorted that out yet, have we? <laughs> You'll love them though. I'm going to show you, even though we can't. We can't actually, we're not going to release them yet, but I'll show you. Because when you when you see them and you understand the, the point of the colouring, you know, art, this is a tea, isn't it? Um, I think you'll really enjoy them. And uh, let's have a look, we're getting some tea in there. I think you're going to love them. See? Because there's something about colouring. The artist. The artist, in fact. It's going to work well, isn't it? Can you see how it's coming now? Is that working for you yet? So that's it. So you dig in and then you feather out and you should be getting a really nice blend, like a seamless blend. And you may think this is taking way too long, but it's, it's not that it's the, it's the process. It's the process. Take your time with it because what you'll find is you'll get the result. So we've done the second. Let's go to a darker colour now. What have I got next? I'm playing it safe, you see. What, about, what am I using now? This is warm grey four. What did I have there then? That was cold grey three. Let's go to... This is a different colourway though, isn't it? What about that one then? Let's go to the darker one. Warm grey five. Let's go a bit darker. See if we can go to the next one going to sharpen it a little bit and then I'm going to use my sanding block just to take the top off. That'll do. Now let's go again and this time this should really help. So we're going to cut in there and then just right so you're going to cut right in tight now 
and then just feather out a little bit. So cut in, pressing, I'm not pressing too hard, but just it's better to go backward and go over yourself rather than press hard. I'm just doing all the horizontals. And if the if you feel you need a point, then just flip the flip the pencil. If it's getting blunt or dull, then just flip the pencil and it should be sharp again. So you're just going, just reversing the chisel. So it's getting a bit flat now. So then I'm just going to flick it round and then it'll be sharper again. And I can get into that tight area, see? That's it. Just going along the top there to give that, to give the box a kind of a, that'll do. Yeah, we could do that afterwards. I think that one actually, I'm more tempted to go along with the with the the warm grey to get the box right. There. I think it's working now though. Right now let's go to the Yeah. It does make a difference, doesn't it? I think it is there. Is it working? Let's have a look. Yeah, it definitely is. See, and you can always pull out this side a bit. There. You still on the artist or have you got down to is nothing yet? just want to make it look as if you could get your fingers in underneath that's the main thing here isn't it and the way to do it is just build up the layers that's the key so you're just gonna dig in and and when it pops is when is the point at which it pops is when you go in with the absolute darkest one along that edge that's when it will go ping so we could do that right at the end so what's the time? 22. We're going to go one more line. We'll repeat it and then we'll go again. Right. So let's do horizontal, vertical, diagonals and then go again. So we need a soft edge on this one, on the on the, the warm grey too. No, let's do the horizontals. Sorry. Horizontal. So you're going to go like that and then feather down, like that and then feather down. Don't press too hard. Do you remember we, we talked about this before? The perga liners are the same. If there's not too many horizontals on this one, um, if you press too hard, then what happens is um, it, the, the nature of the oily, waxy pencils is that it creates a seal. And once you've done that, it's difficult to add more layers. So if that does happen, then you just take your pink eraser and just gently loosen up the surface again, right? And then you can add layer on layer on layer on layer. Right, let's do the verticals. On this one, the, the verticals are going to be the, the telling one. So we'll do the verticals. And then what we'll do is, Always on this side, on this side, okay, because the light's coming in from there. So always stay on the on either underneath there, because if the light's coming from here, just be logical. It's going to be there, 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 there. Let's just get it in lightly. There's a vertical and a horizontal. So you see there, there's like rugby posts. <sighs> We've been watching, we just finished watching it last night. Superb um, series. It's, I think it was a six part series uh, called The English Game. Have you seen it? Um, it was, it's, it's absolutely spectacular. And I'm no, I'm no big football fan, um, but it was about the FA Cup and about Northern football teams 
and um, the mill workers and then, you know, the north and the south, the great divide between the Etonians and Harrow and all the public, you know, the wealthy and then and how the how the football players, how the the the, the poor workers in the mills, how they became brilliant football players, you know, and what football meant to them. It was very, very interesting, very interesting. If you're looking for a good watch, that's the one. Really, really good. Well, I thought so anyway. Has anyone seen it apart from me? There we go. So we've got our our warm grey in, which gives it that lovely soft, almost vintage look, doesn't it? Right. We can get rid of the the line just by feathering a bit. Right. It's just pressing less as you go down. Right. Once we've done that, then the next thing is going with the next one. Stick to the plan. You might want to write it down so that you know if you're going, you're going using three out of the five, make sure you know which three you're using. Right, let's get the, there aren't too many horizontals. Stay closer to the lines now. Stay closer. And if, If your pencil is getting a little bit dull, then use the sharpener and take the top off again, get the chisel going with the with the sandpaper. That's a really good good thing to do. Here we go. And this is such a the thing about this is it's very systematic. There's a process here. And and for, for many of us who are quite anxious at the moment, for whatever reasons not without cause, I have to say. Um, you know, or if you've lost your mojo, there's a lot of that going on at the moment too. Then this is a really good way of calming your mind. You know, it, it definitely works. It definitely works. I've got to show you. I've got to show you. Where did I put? See if I put it here. I definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right, ready. <laughs> Look at that. Hang on, I've got to pan out a little bit so I can show it to you better. Look. So these are Woodland Creatures, a colouring art pack. And we've got four different illustrations by Mel. Aren't they beautiful? Hey? So what we've got is inside, we've got different colouring packs. This is what we're going to, to treat you to. And I thought this would just be wonderful. And they come in different sizes. So you've got like an A4 pack. They're, they're really good. You've got four A4 sheets. So you've got one of each of the big ones. Then you've got two A5s of each of them. And then four A6s of each of them. These are the A6s. But, f you know, for the shading, what we're doing here, this will be superb on the, on the trees, in the background. You know, on the on the grasses and on the leaves, these will be absolutely spectacular. We've got summer friends, woodland family, autumn stag, and March hares. Our friend Dee did the colouring. Mel did the illustrations. It's a real collaboration. And Lisa at work, she put the packs together and designed all this. Isn't that beautiful? And there, it's all on really good quality card as well. On Good, very thick card. I know that. Must be 300 GSM, 350. But there you go. So this is something to look forward to, you know. these are, This is going to be spectacular. And that's why this this kind of um, shading. I mean, I, I, I would like to do one of these just in greys. I mean, the colours that Dee has used are superb. But I would love to... to to do this just in with four different colors of gray wouldn't that be great grayscale grayscalers how are we doing <laughs> yeah and they lovely though 
And we're the sales. Well, let's see. The sales going on till we've got a half price sale at the moment. <laughs> Members sale. Bear with us, though. Please understand. You know, we 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 try to do the right thing by by we don't sell out. We make if we if we if we sell out of any of the plates because we do have we do carry a vast stock. But if we sell out, then what we do is we just make more for the duration of the sale. We honour everything that you order where we possibly can. But sometimes, you know, with a with a paired back outfit the team that we've got is much smaller now than it used to be needs must and all that um and so it takes a little longer you know so if it takes a little while to receive your order please be kind be patient we're all worn out and um we've just got to kind of travel gently really and if we're trying we're trying to do the right thing um, and we don't, you know, can't go any faster if you shout at us. It just makes makes the job um, more challenging. <sighs> but thank you for taking advantage of the half price. I mean, half price sale is a half price sale, isn't it? It doesn't matter which way you stare at it. It's, uh, it's something else, really. It's coming a bit closer so you can see it. So see that N? It just looks like a dark line. But let's see if I can tease out the the, the beige, the warm grey. I'll tease it out a bit further like that and that one and that one, right? And then I'll take the third cut, the, 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 the next colour in, and I'll go again. But this time I won't go out so far, right? So it's like um, graduated, isn't it? See, look at the difference. Then I'm going to take the darkest, darkest one and I'm going to come right in on the line. I tell you what, on um, on Sunday on the telly, I was working on it yesterday for hours. Um, I worked out how to do like graduated, seamless graduation with the gel press. So you might enjoy that as well, because often the gel press is is very uh, colourful and very textured and grungy. That's if you you say jelly plate or gel press plate, then you automatic the association is grunge, isn't it? So I thought, all right, I'm going to try something really smooth and elegant and see how I get on. And I really like the, I really like the contrast. It's very, very arty. Full saturation ombre, I'm calling it. <laughs> Looks good. And it is this again. It's more of this. It's this, this layering up of different colours and just feathering out the shades. How's yours looking? Are you crafting along with me? Hmm? Well, my friends, I tell you what, I can hear them gearing up outside. I think they're going to go for it again in a minute. Here they go. <laughs> I better go and make them a cup of tea and, um, and crack on with demos for the TV. It's going to get quite loud in here. Ugh. But there you go. This is the last day of the farmer. So this is the last opportunity. If we wait too long, it'll be too late to do this to the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this. Saturday, I think, is my window where I can finish it. Let's have a look over here, see if it's working. Is it working? If I come in close, you see how it looks? It's starting to look more three-dimensional. It sure is, isn't it? There you go. And once we, once we get that three-dimensional effect, look at the difference between the artist is nothing and the rest. Yeah, so that's the, that's the object. I've shown you as much as I can now, but it almost, from where I'm, from where I'm standing, it almost looks like a wire on paper, okay? So I think that'll do. Um, Thank you for your help, Paul, and thank you for joining me. Um, I, I look forward to seeing you on Monday again at 10 o'clock. And what's tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm going up to London. I know. I haven't been up to London for a long time. I think the last time we went up was when we went to the, um, the top drawer, the stationary gift show last year. 
Um, so we're going up to the Shard. I say, I say, I say, to meet the accountant. <laughs> I could think of more exciting dates, but there you go. <laughs> Needs must. It's that time of year. So we're going to have going to have a meeting with the accountant at the Shard. Doesn't that sound lovely? But Dave and I said, if we're up in London, perhaps we could take advantage of the fact that we're members at the V&A and we haven't been there for three years and catch a, catch a, catch a tube over to the Victoria and Albert, you know, just to see something different. Yeah, a little bit of make the most of being in London, hey? Why not? Wear masks. It'd be all right. We have to break through this barrier of fear, I feel, you know. And I'm not saying run around, start hugging everybody. I'm just saying I need to overcome my fears. Hmm. Anyway, on that happy note, I'm going to crack on with my prep for Sunday, two to four, don't forget, on the craft store. Um, and Paul, thank you very much for your help. Yeah, they're starting outside. Have a lovely, have a lovely Thursday. Keep smiling. It works, you know, it really does. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.